A very long time ago, though not necessarily in a faraway galaxy, Volkswagen invented the GTI, and now 42 years later, it claims to have reinvented the spirit of the original Golf GTI with this car, the new UP GTI. Think of it as a hot hatch for the city that costs just under 14 grand in three-door form as tested here, and which is seriously competitive beside its rivals from Renault and Fiat. It's powered by a new three-cylinder, one-litre turbocharged engine that produces 113 bhp and 200 newton metres of torque. All up, it'll do 126 miles an hour, while the UP GTI's 0-62 time is 8.8 seconds, both of which are spookily similar performance figures to the original Golf GTI's. But what's the UP GTI like to drive though? And can it really capture our attention like the original Golf did nearly half a century ago? So on the move, the UP GTI, the first thing you notice about it is the way it sounds because they've done some really quite clever stuff trying to amplify the three-cylinder engine into the cabin without actually resorting to putting it through the speakers, which is, which is nice. And I have to say, it really does sound quite fruity. I hope this comes across on the microphone, but look, I'm just going to kind of drop it down to second gear and give it some beans. And you get a proper kind of ever so slightly 911 like thrum so it sounds good and you know what it goes pretty well too okay the power figure is not particularly big but there are two key factors one is the fact that it's got 200 newton meters of torque so it is properly torquey and that's that's a turbocharged engine for you right there but also it's the lack of weight the absence of weight is what makes the up gti feel not genuinely rapid, but properly perky in a straight line. And because it sounds quicker than it actually is, you put all those things together and it's, it's pretty entertaining, this thing, I have to admit. The UP GTI comes in two guises, with three and five doors. And in both cases, the cabin is high in quality, low in unnecessary frills, even if the tartan seat cloth is a touch OTT. For the money though, it's extremely well equipped with cruise control, sat-nav and aircon, all included in the basic price. But it's on the move where the UP GTI gives its strongest performance for most of the time. They've done various bits and bobs to the chassis. It rides 15 millimetres lower. You get these 17 inch wheels. The springs and dampers are a little bit stiffer than normal, but it is still quite soft. There is kind of a fair bit of body roll on a road like this which is just kind of meandering its way down towards Nice in the south of France so it's not absolutely kind of granite stiff the steering doesn't feel that pinpoint accurate you can kind of place the nose fairly accurately in the corner but you don't feel absolutely like you're nailing every apex but it's good enough you know it's good enough the gearbox is a six-speed manual, like it or not. There are no paddles. They're good for Volkswagen for making that decision. This car is going to appeal to a, a you know, the target audience is pretty young. Under 30, you've got to say, for most owners, or certainly under 35, and, and you know, you don't want flappy paddles. So what you get is a six-speed manual, and it's, it's, it's okay. It's a little bit rubbery. It sort of feels like a normal, super mini gear change in a slightly sporty super mini so it's a kind of seven out of ten gear change i'd say the throttle response though and the response from all three pedals is pretty good you get these brands hatch logoed 17 inch alloy wheels inside which are slightly bigger disc brakes which are ventilated at the front and as a result it stops pretty well. The pedal's a little bit soft, I have to say, but it's, you know, it, it's more than okay. It, it definitely feels sporting in its demeanor. What you don't get in the UP GTI is much space. I mean, it's, it's fine up here and the cabin is nicely built. There's a reasonable amount of equipment considering the money. In fact, there's a very good amount of equipment considering the money. At under 14 grand but space in the back seats is 
pretty chummy if you want to try and put even two people back there. Three people you can squeeze in, but you wouldn't want to do a particularly long journey. And the boot, although you get this kind of split level, um, it ain't particularly big. One decent sized suitcase and a couple of squashy bags is about all you're going to get in that boot. Overall, I really quite like the UP GTI. I mean, it's not the last word in driving dynamics, and it's not meant to be. It's kind of a cheerful alternative to a Twingo GT. And to be honest, it blows a Twingo GT into next week. It's not as kind of raucous and fun and mad and unhinged as a Fiat 500R Bath, but then the Fiat costs a good three grand more than the UP GTI. So, you know, at that level and at that much of a percentage of the asking price, it's very difficult to knock the VW, especially when it's so equipped, especially when it's so well made. It looks funky enough on the outside and it goes well and drives pretty decently. We like the new UP GTI, but we're also some way short of being completely in love with it. Truth is, it's well priced and extremely well equipped. And on the move, it's engaging enough without being brilliant in any particular area. So has VW reinvented the spirit of the original Golf GTI with this car? No, not really. But that doesn't stop the UP GTI from being a likeable little thing all the same. Click on the video windows to watch a first drive of the new Toyota Yaris GRMN or of the latest Polo GTI from VW. Click on the play icon to watch our latest video or on our logo to subscribe.